Morning guys, this is day four of the Portway Trail. So we've reached the summit today at Mam Tor, which is around eight and a half miles away from where we are at the moment. I managed to stay on the campsite last night in Wardlow. Uh, I believe it's called the White House Farm. And it was quite a comfortable night. Uh, a bit cooler than the night before. But anyway, we're heading along. We're going to Wardlow Myers now. In March 1815, Anthony Lingard of Lytton was convicted at Derby for the murder of Hannah Oliver, who was a toll housekeeper at Wardlow Mines. He was hanged at Derby Jail, and by order of the judge, Sir John Bailey, his body was gibbeted, which means hung on public display, here at Peter's Stone in Crestbrook Dale, and less than half a mile from the scene of the crime. This was the last gibbeting to take place in Derbyshire, gave Peter Stone a new nickname, Gibbet Rock. The story goes on that Hannah's body was discovered by a maidservant from the inn across the road from the toll house, now called the Three Stags Head. Inside the pub was a glass case on display and within was a mummification of a cat found in the chimney breast while the renovation was taking place. Fortunately, the mummified cat is now gone. In the centre of the screen we have Peter's stone that's believed to resemble the Vatican of St. Peter's in Rome. Not sure how, I've been to both now and neither look anything like each other. So we're just walking up towards Stanley House. So we get past Stanley House, we're going to go past Stanley Lodge and then across Stanley Moor. In front of us we can see Wardlow Myers and beyond that is the campsite that I stayed at last night as you can see it's quite is that is actually two campsites the trees separate the two and there also is a third campsite in Wardlow Myers as you can see just on the left hand side near the trees and the barn so in Wardlow Myers Black Harry was a highwayman on the Turnpikes Road who troubled travellers on the moors around Wardlow and Longstone in Stony Middleton, his name lives on in place names like Black Harry Gate and Black Harry House. But it was at Gibbet Field near Wardlow that he met his end when he was hanged and gibbeted after being arrested by the Castleton Constables. A poem by William Newton helped in the ending of Gibbeting in 1834. So as you can see at the moment, it's a bit of a cloudy day today, but looking across here, you can see the sun is breaking out. You can see as it's moving down on the grass, you can see the lighter grass, although it's only one spot that's beaming onto the campsite now. Although that cloud is fast closing. I believe it's meant to be dry today, but cloudy. So we'll see. little family of calves and mums. So our next uh, summit is straight in front here, that's Tides Low. Once we reach that, hopefully we should be able to see Mantor, the end point. Some of the stone walls that we can see in the Peak District are well over 400 years old. Most of the fields in the higher part of the White Peak and into the Dark Peak of Derbyshire. Now we're not far from the Dark Peak now, so we're about, I think about three kilometers and we should hit into the Dark Peak of Derbyshire. Longhorn cattle on one side of the field. And you can see a few calves there as well. And then if we go on the opposite side of the field, we've got some Frisians. Good milk cows. Morning, how are you today, young calf? 
You're big, you're as big as your mummy and daddy, so are you? With your big horns. Anyway, like usual, I've got a walk to do. Well, I think this barn needs a little bit of uh, attention. And then looking across, we can see Salamas. Anyway, we're continuing on Trot Lane. We're going to take a right at the top of this road and left, and then we should get up to High Rake. Just come across this old tractor. It's a Massey Ferguson 35. Not sure how old it is, but it looks quite old. So we're just walking through Windmill, as it says here. We're gonna head up to High Rake. Our windmill has never had a windmill here, which is ironic. Now, although Windmill has never had a windmill, it's surprising because it is on a ridge and we're a thousand feet above sea level now. But in 1607, a list of place names was written and the place was called Windmill. Windmill is in Wind, M-I-L-N-E. By the side of Windmill, there's a place called High Rake, which we're walking towards now. And High Rake is a mine, obviously disused now, but it's, it was a large mine in the area. There's evidence of it being here since the 13th century. The minerals were all taken by from the toadstone, which the toadstone is a, a hard volcanic rock. And as we look across the landscape, this is the Dark Peak of Derbyshire now. So we are officially in the Dark Peak. So we're just passing High Rake Disused Mine. Not much left of it now, obviously these hills, probably a lot of the mounds is spoil heaps. In 1834, one of Peak District's most ambitious lead mine inventors was born when the High Rake Mining Company was formed. The aim was to reach rich lead ore beneath a thick layer of volcanic toadstone. A shaft sunk in 1768 had failed because of the amount of water encountered. The new venture, using 1830s state of the art pumping technology was undoubtedly going to succeed. By 1852, when the mine closed, it was clear that the optimism had been misplaced. High rate mine was doomed from the start. With hindsight, the mine shaft was probably sunk in a volcanic plug, which went down towards the center of the earth. So the depth of the shaft was 720 feet, which is 219 meters which is basically the same height of Blackpool Tower in Blackpool. And here is the shaft. Now, obviously we're not going to be able to see the bottom if it's 119 metres down. So in front, you can see a grit stone. These were used in mills. They would have had a wooden post in the middle and they would have had two of these and they would have grinded. So like a lot of windmills would be grinding corn, they would use like a grit stone like this. Continue on the track now. It's on the footway. We've got about six miles left before we get to Mantor, so hopefully we can keep on it all the way. And it's been a great trail. I've enjoyed it. I've seen a lot of interesting things. I found out a lot of interesting things along the way. I spoke to some locals that have told me things about the trail, as well as the research I did beforehand. So it's a pity it's not the clearest day. It's looking like when we get to the summit of Mantor, we're not going to be able to see that far. But nevertheless, we'll be there soon. So as we look across the landscape, we can see a hill on the horizon. That is Loose Hill. And that is part of the ridgeway of Mantor. Loose Hill is at one end, Mantor is at the other end. So we can't see Mantor yet, but I'm sure once we get up to tides low, we will be able to see it. We're still marching on, not far to go now. Tides low is where the mast is at the top. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we reach there. To the right is these mounds. This is uh, part of the high rate mine. 
this is what they called dirty ore which meant it was the ore that wasn't good enough to use So we've just reached Tideslow Rake. Now, as you can see on the right hand side, there's a load of spoil heaps of waste being mined with for lime, also mined for lead, and as later on was mined for floor spot. Mining started here in the 12th century and it continued all the way to the 18th century. Then it stopped, the decline and then was reworked about the 1850s for about 20 years and then eventually was closed down. Also, there's a burial ground which you can see right in front of us, the more circular heaps is a bowl burial ground from possibly the Bronze or Iron Age. So this is Tideslow Rake as we head up towards Tideslow. So straight in front of us we have the burial bowl which, as I said, actually goes back to either the Bronze or Iron Age. And as I continue the Tyslow Rake, heading up towards Tyslow with the masters, you can see that all these spoil heaps is believed to be a lime kiln as well, and also some mine shafts. One that's got uh, old railway lines, which we may have come across in a moment. This gives further evidence that we are walking on the original portway due to the history of the rake and uh, dating back to Neolithic times with the Bronze Age of the burial mounds. There's another mine shaft that's been filled in just in front of us. An interesting place to go to. But I spoke to the farmer's wife and she said that mountain rescue have been up over this area several times because of people going up here with not the right clothing or the right equipment and several people have died recently due to obviously a lot of people follow google maps and google maps isn't built for crossing countrysides i suggest if uh, anybody wants to get into the outdoors don't go out with the wrong gear watch a few youtube videos like my channel where i tell you tips and skills on the outdoors and equipment to take it's great to get out but you need to know a little bit of knowledge how to navigate for starters and what to wear in the right weather. 
because if you don't, you can get in all sorts of problems. On my left, just at the bottom of Tideslow Rake, come across this. Now, it's not actually marked on the map. Could possibly be by those stones on the way to lead down an old quarry. Getting closer to uh, Mantor. Although, that's the end of this trail, and then we'll start the next trail very soon. So just in front of this, where this building is, is where the original lime kilns were, burning the limestone from Tideslow Rake, which is just behind me. We're continuing on the path, and we're aiming to, aiming to go to Oxmoor Law now. Just go in the past Bushy Head Farm in the moment. Cows walking in single file. I think it's dinner time. Mm. Surely you've got more to say than that. Don't be shy. Give it a try. Mm. There you go. You can do it. Anyway, I'm off. Good one, that one. So we're just on the concourse of the Batham Gate, which is a Roman road, heading to the spa town of Buxton. This side has disappeared. If we swing round, the car gets in the way. Batham means road to the bathhouse. shafts and an old quarry all the shoes now and then look over to our right you see a mound with uh, some red dirt on the side of it that is an old mine called cop mine quite a big mine in the area And here we have it, the summit point that we're aiming for is Mount Tor. So in the centre of the screen is Mount Tor. Just in front of that, where the tree line is, is Winners Pass. Moving across from Mount Tor, there's a ridge line. So we're going across a bit is Hollins Cross. Moving over to where the trees are is Back Tor. And then the hill on the end is Loose Hill. So looking down in the valley, we can see this Ogmore mine. Looking across there, in the middle of the picture now, uh, the mounds there, that is the Portway mine. That's the second Portway mine that we've come across on this Portway trail. So it would show evidence again that we 
we are walking on the Portway Trail. Closer and closer to the final port of uh, Mantor. Uh, just in front of us, we've got some old quarries that are disused. In front, we have Optimal House. And then, just looking over to the left, by the side of the field, there's, uh, it looks like a bit of a quarry. But it's actually called Giant's Hole. The Giant's Hole is a well-known cave consisting mostly of large passages. It is a streamway cave. There is a complex system connecting the cave to Oxlo Cavern and Maskill Mine to the south. It is easily accessible, making it a favourite with the groups. See, there's plenty of people going up Mantor today. On our right is Peveril Peak and Blue John Caverns, which are open to the public. The Blue John Cavern is named after its unique stone that can only be found here and nowhere else in the world. Discovered by the Romans 2,000 years ago. So as we reach the end point of this portway, thank you for joining me. I found it a great walk. It has been a bit breezy at times, but it has been dry, it's been warm. I've had, found loads of things to see and uh, I found out further information as we've continued on the trail. This is a 4,000 year old path that is it's probably one of the oldest paths in England. And it's not that well known. Uh, plenty of people have passed and have asked what I was doing. And when I've said the portway, nobody really knew what I was talking about. Or nobody knew really what this path was about. So maybe you would like to follow it for yourself. So there'll be links in the description of all the information you need. So with all that said, um, I'd like to say thank you for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed and you've enjoyed it, then please subscribe. So as we come ever closer to the ancient iron port that was on top of Mantor, we are passing through Windy Knoll now, before we actually go towards the summit of the hill. It's a funny how sound travels. Those people up on the ridge, I can hear them. Oh, good. Looking down the hill now, on this side, this is the side that had a landslide in the 1970s. It took away about a third of the mountain. So from a different view you can see how much of a landslide and how much of the mountain actually disappeared. So we've reached the summit with 48 miles completed on the portway. This ancient route is 4,000 years old. 
and I'd like to say thank you for joining me and uh, like usual look after yourselves stay safe and I'll see you soon bye bye hikers